old Two Sugar YouTube channel. My name's Wayne, and uh, yeah, today we're working on junk, fellas. So what we got going on today is, um, well, we're in a mad dash to make it to McCungie. And for those of you that don't know, McCungie, PA, is a um, national annual truck show down in McCungie, Pennsylvania. I think it's McCungie, Pennsylvania. Anyway, that uh, it's put on by the ATCA which is the Antique Truck Club of, of America. And we made it last year with the cat, with, with, when we picked up the cat-powered 359 and brought it in the trailer, et cetera, to Mukunji. So we're gonna try to go every year. James is thrashing to get his truck back together, which you have seen us, well, I don't know if the video will be out, but anyway, we just painted it and it's pretty freaking sick. So yeah. Anyway, what we need to do now that I'm back home from that is get the trailer ready. Now, y'all watched me build that trailer last year, but it has literally sat all winter long. Haven't touched it. Haven't so much as, like, touched the pony motor. No clue if this thing's going to run. So, yeah, that is next on our list. So, let's fire up the old Pete. And see if we can't get backed up to it. Let's see what we got. Just rolled back in the driver for about the hundredth time. Uh, a couple things I'm noticing here. One, these new tires are really greasy. They uh, lock way quicker on the brakes than the old ones did. Uh, two, I changed the breather down there and on the front axle. Yeah, look at her. And three, uh, we pulled back in the other day. You watch us drive this friggin' thing, and um, I, you know, said my goodbyes, whatever, turned the camera off, and 
came out here and rolled under the truck just to give it a once over and this friggin carrier bearing that we rebuilt this thing was friggin hot as shit and the only reason i noticed it was i came i come always come under here and i grab hold of this drive shaft and i pull myself under the truck well i don't remember ever doing it when the truck was running before or you know after right after a trip or whatever but anyway that friggin thing was hot and i didn't really like it so we've pulled that in and out of there like seven times between and then put put the old bearing back in it took it for a ride it was the same so then i changed the grease and put the new bearing back in it and it's a little cooler but we just got back i put probably 30 miles on well cooled off quite a bit since then it was 170 when i pulled back in the dry in the in the, in the shop here so i don't know how hot it's gonna get going down the highway but I don't know. It must be the way it is, cause this there's no vibration in it at all, and there's no binding, like no binding. It's it's very very cool, or uh, very very smooth. So I guess we're just not gonna worry about it. So if any of you guys have that issue and you're super concerned about it i guess depending on that style bearing it might just run hot all right boys well we got the trailer back in here time for some much needed love uh what we really have to do and the whole reason we're doing this is we've got to convert this front axle to oil right now it's grease we don't want the grease anymore it's just making a mess back here so we're going to change all that over. Uh, I want to check all tire pressures. Just give this thing a once over because we haven't touched it since last year. <sighs> so you can see the last thing we did with this was the uh, clutch on the race truck. So we're going to have to sweep the deck. Get all the schmoo off of it. But also the other thing I got going on here and I wanted to show you fellas. Don't mind the truck. It's filthy. It's just been sitting in the dirt. Hear that air leak? And it only happens after I charge a trailer and then park again. And it's coming out of the red valve. And it builds. So I think what it is is air bleeding back out of the trailer. And shouldn't really do that. So we got to look at that. And yeah, a couple things to do. Let's get to it. All right, fellas. A trailer jacked up. I remember from last year, I had to go buy a special socket when I changed all these studs because I got the extra long studs because we went to an aluminum wheel, but I don't think I needed to do that. These stick out way too far, and now my uh, doodly do hits the square before it engages in the so, I don't know, maybe we'll change them all back over again. Inconvenient. Yeah, I was, I was misremembering. Shocking, I know. Those are inboard drums on that other axle, too. After a while, all this shit kind of blends into one, you know? Gross. God, I hate grease. Perfect, now it's raining. That's good. Exactly what I need right now. This rain. Pretty sure this is not a recommended procedure. Ugh. Well, I tight. I mean, 
I'm wearing Lewis, but I'm not tight either. Oh, perfect. Why wouldn't it be two different sizes? Not overly tight. Seems reasonable. Got the brake backed off. Move out of the goddamn thing. God, I hate grease. Holy shit. Why is that so heavy? Oh. Good God. Oh. That is way heavier than the truck one. All right, fellas, got everything all cleaned up. Now for the fun part. Let's see if we can't. Yeah. That's what we needed. Not that I can't lift it, but it's very, very inconvenient. Water's not great to be in there. I mean, it's fine, but. That's inconvenient. Let's see. You go like that. All right. To be honest with you, all we're really trying to do is take the weight off of me so that we can get it in there without killing the seal. This has to come up and tilt at the same time like that. A little bit more of that, maybe. Was this? I'm just use a jack. That's what everybody says in every fucking video. Jack is nothing but in the way. I just I knew better. Can send it. Stop listening to people.
could have done that sooner. Oil in the gasket isn't helpful. You know, because I didn't fill the center of that hub with oil. It's gonna, you're gonna have to do this a bunch of times before it's... So you'll get it to the full mark there. I usually go way past it on this first squirt. And that's gonna have to settle out because now it's, now it's gotta propagate and fill. Make its way back through that hub into the rear bearing. So that's gonna take a little bit, so... Just let it sit, take your time, you know, you're going to have to, just keep in mind, you're going to have to do that a few times. I think you can probably already see it. You can see it kind of lowering its way in there. Yeah. That's the ticket. God willing, we're done here. Alrighty, fellas, whole button bag up, wheels torqued on. Done and done as far as that goes. Um, gotta go get parts for the tractor tomorrow. I think it's the tractor protection valve is bad, so. All right, fellas, another day, another lost dollar. Uh, yeah, we're working in the rain again today. Luckily, we're mostly working under the truck here. I've got that, I've got that shit diagnosed, I think. If I've done my job correctly, so we pulled the steering column out of it and uh, was looking at them valves. I chased that line back, goes under the hood. Well, it goes to the junction block, which then goes under the hood, and then it comes back to the tractor protection valve. And I believe that to be the failure there that's leaking the air. So I'm gonna try to set you up in here. I don't know. At least you guys aren't the ones that have to work in these conditions, so. That's good. I'm going to be under there. <sighs> Boys, life is hard. It's harder when you're stupid. Let's get this one off there. And this line's kind of in the way. Ugh. There's that one. And we got a couple back here. Hopefully these come off. Oh yeah.
Nobody cares if it snaps. What's up now? Oh, that didn't help. I can only hope the f***ing engineer to put this here f***ing watches this video and realizes how much dick he sucks. I thought this was f***ing stupid. I don't know how I get out of bed in the morning. Look what you went and did. You made me have a breakfast beer. Because of your stupidity. Actually gonna come off there. Call me impressed. We're gonna use a brass one so it doesn't do that in the future. So it doesn't corrode. This one also faces forward. All right, fellas, well, I spared you the agony of watching me swear through putting that back in for every bit as frustrating as it was coming apart. It was 10 times more so going back together and trying to get those nuts started. What an absolute idiot put that there. Anyway, everything's all new. So I buttoned up the lines and the dash, kind of. I mean, the dash is just kind of set in here, but... uh. I figured we'd fire it up, let it get some air into it, and see if it's fixed. No RPMs or nothing because all that shit's disconnected. Leaking now. I actually don't hear anything. Whatever it is, it's pulling the air right out of this thing though. And we didn't cure a f thing. Actually, we did. Wait, no, it did that before. Let's see. Same thing. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, 
All right, fellas, a little bit more diagnostic. I think the only thing I can think in, in the back is that a trailer tank check valve is bad. But also, when you push both of those valves in, up here is a wicked air leak. And I found it is not that. It is this thing way back there. See it? That thing, where my finger is. It's a valve electric switch or some shit. I don't know what it is. But what we're gonna do is, uh, luckily, I was almost ready to throw this thing out the window. Peterboat put in an access panel for us. And uh, to be honest with you, I am eternally grateful. So what we're gonna do is pull these four bolts up here. Let's show you. These four, and that should get us right there, so. What a freaking treat, boys. Oh. Ah, sick. Take a picture of that shit. Boys, check this shit out. All I did was legit tighten these screws. No more leak. It's friggin' fixed. Now we still got something going on, but I can hear air. Obviously, air is moving. I don't know where it's going. We got a leak here. That's brand new. I pulled the cover off of it. So we're gonna have to like tighten that or something. That's next. Where is the air going? Hang on. All right. So let's see this friggin' thing. Is it loose? Oh yeah. That was a deal there. <sighs> Click. Now, what else is freaking leaking? Close this valve here. See a tractor's all aired up. All our buttons are in. Maybe that was it. Maybe that was a big enough leak. Jeez, that would be wild. I hear absolutely nothing. Bands are aired up. We're all aired up. We might have got this licked. So the only thing that we've got that's a problem, let's make sure that brakes aren't dragging perfect do the brakes apply that's a great question what's that sound something's leaking it's got to be up on the Gotta be up there. So we got a small leak up there. Let's see what it is. Oh, slippery when wet. Oh yeah. Something. Oh, it's plastic. I bet that just needs reclipped. Alright, let's see. Let me see. I don't know if I can get you guys in there, fellas. I might just have to, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Oh yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's that line, so I'll mess with that later, but the majority of that leak is gone. So now, 
What else is leaking? Is there any tractor side leaks still? Oh man, I'm glad that thing is fixed. Okay. Oh wow, that's way better. It's dead quiet in here. Perfect. So, give her a little trolley. Now we should not be able to move that tire. That leak's gonna drive me nuts now. I'll have to pull that apart and clean it up. Perfect. Brakes are on. So, now what we've got to do is figure out why all the trailer air is bleeding off when we pull all the air from the cab. So, let's do this. Relinquish trolley. I don't hear anything. Pull trailer feed. Flow parking. Now, listen. That's the noise. It's over here. It's this thing still. And now it's even more intense because we fixed the leak on the glad hand. So, if I, if you unplug, here's how I'm troubleshooting this. If you unplug this thing, Noise in the cab goes away, you can hear it. No bueno. So now what I gotta do, I think what we've got, I think the only thing that could be, since that's the emergency side, quote unquote, Get under here. Take a peek. Oh, of course. This will be fun. Our tank is there. So we've got to find tank inlet. And that has to have a check valve on it, I would I would imagine. And I think that's what's doing us dirty, fellas. If I had to guess. I could be totally wrong. But I would bet that's what that is. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll have to have a peek at it. So I'm going to do some digging under here, fellas, and I will bring you back. Alright, fellas, looks like... Uh... Oh, boy, it looks like that business is for real right there. Look at that. Oh, I hate freaking bees. Not anymore, it ain't. So that line I traced it goes. This is the air supply right here from the tractor. So it's going into that relay valve. And then So I don't know, hell, I don't know if that should be, I don't really know how that works, boys. Let me do some digging. Bingo, boys. Check valve has been located right there on the front of that relay valve. So I'm going to pull that off there and bring it back. All right, fellas. The uh, check valve repair did not work, so... We've moved on. I got another one. All the research. Uh, so this is. Well, let's hang on. Frig. This is called a relay emergency valve. It's for older trailers that are pre 121 which apparently mine is, which seems odd to me, but whatever. Uh, I 
and it's of the charging type. So what that means basically is that your check valve is built. You smash the f out of another GoPro battery. I hope it explodes in the charger. I am so sick of those goddamn things. So anyway. What the charging type means is this is basically, it's bolted right on, well it's not bolted, it's screwed right into the air tank. The air tank charges through this valve and your check valve is integrated into it, which is, we know that's the case because it's right there. So, Fleet Pride had one in stock. I am going to change over all my fittings onto this one and then we'll go get it installed. Here, right, fellas, I just want to make mention, I, I didn't get a video. I did take a picture of it, so if I remember while I'm editing, I'll put it in here. But I took this out yesterday, but the fitting, the 90, was still in it. And I took it out, and I didn't really think anything of it because, you know, the screen's still in it. I don't know if you can see down in there. The screen's still in it. Well, uh, in between that fitting and the screen... It was completely plugged with shit. I don't know how the trailer was getting any air at all, honestly. Uh, so I think that explains why it takes so long for the trailer to air up, I was thinking. So at some point, something must have made its way through my glad hand and all the way through that freaking line, or, or it got blown back through the line. It could have been resting up in the glad hand and then got blown back through the line from the air pressure into this inlet uh also in here you can kind of see all the schmoo in there not great let me see if i get you a light oh yeah so it's right full of shit in there so i think we're doing the right thing replacing it i might I, there's a possibility i could take it apart and clean it and maybe fix it but Dude, we're right here. I'm just going to toss this one on. I already got the fittings onto it. So I will uh, bring you back when we get further. Well, fellas, guess who's working in the rain? The good news is... If you come up here... I did get the valve all installed. And let's say we pop our trailer now. No more hissy hiss. We've fixed it. Finally. So that's a wrap. It took me far longer than I would have preferred. But you know what? Better late than never. So we are done with that debacle. Let's close this off here. That was the handiest thing I ever did, by the way. I just put that in there. So we close this off. We'll pop that. And now we're like totally independent of the shop air. Let's get rid of this. I hate air leaks. And it's kind of hard to diagnose them when that thing's pissing air all over. I don't hear anything. Shot of the new valve installed. It should be aired up, which is the case. Seems pretty minty. So all I've got left is uh, this cord was broke off the other tank back there. So I've got it strung over there, but I need to. Uh, crimping in on it so i'm going to do that i'm not going to record any of that but this trailer has been deemed ready for the road by me i think so next we gotta we gotta get our race truck fired up and out of the weeds and get that on the trailer because that's coming to mccungy with us this year so that will be next First things first, fellas. 
If you need parts, call Brandon. We need a friggin' birthday or a friggin' celebratory beer here. Friggin' love fixing shit. It's rare it happens. Huh? Cheers, fellas. All right, fellas, here's what I got. So I want to do something special for y'all patrons because I really appreciate y'all supporting me. So I was thinking, instead of just doing the usual like video ending screen, with, like people putting names and shit, I figure let's not do that. I figure let's get this, we got this banner kicking around. I think we'll take this, I'll write y'all's names on it. And we'll put it somewhere like over on that red storage container or something. I'm gonna find, I'll find a home for it where it's kind of in the background here of every video. And then that way you guys are legitimized in my life forever. So, uh, I, the end goal here is to kind of, I don't think this is going to be a permanent kind of thing, but it's got what I got for right now. What I'm thinking is what we're going to do is get little magnet stickers, not, not, not stickers, but like printable magnets. And then when we move into the truck barn, once I get that finished where I can work out of it, it's all metal, so I could just tag y'all's names on the wall, and then you'll always be on the wall. It's like a win-win, so, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think about this idea, um, but in, in the meantime, I'm going to hang this up. I really appreciate you guys, so, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, and see what, tell me what you think. Let me know if you have a better idea. A couple things. Red thing is real far away from any filming, and uh, this thing's white, so you can like really see it. So that works pretty good. A little short on room there, but uh, you know, we'll grow into it. Let me know your thoughts. I appreciate you guys.